Good morning. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, oh, I want to I want to find that scripture. Actually, you know, it's um, Psalm twenty three six it says David says of the Lord. He says that your love and your goodness and your loving kindness pursue or chase after me. I love that. His, his goodness and his grace pursue you. Hallelujah. I mean, what a blessing that is to have a God that is actually pursuing us with loving kindness and goodness. Yeah. Come on. I, 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 need, I, need, I need God chasing after me with loving kindness and goodness. Yeah. Right. Amen. The world keeps chasing after me with what it wants. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We're not giving in to the to world. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, for, for those that are, don't know what's going on, we, we have a stray dog outside. We're waiting for animal services. Um, it is severely malnourished, and so we've been feeding it and giving it some water. It's got a very large growth on one of its feet. Um, it does have a collar, uh, so that's the back and forth and in and out that's going on is... Uh, we, we, we love dogs, and that's just, that's so sad to see a dog like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> praise the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you according to Ephesians chapter 1 that you give to us, you have given to us, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. We thank you, Father, that the eyes of our understanding are enlightened, and we know the hope of your calling and the glorious inheritance that you have for us. And I pray, Father, this morning that you would give me boldness to speak your word and that you would, you would bring clarity and that uh, you would help us to understand what you're, what you're trying to get across to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I had the privilege of speaking in another church last Sunday, and I, I, Deb said she listened to the message. You too. YouTube, because I have a YouTube channel, with 337 subscribers. Imagine that. <laughs> um, look with me at Psalm 119, 130. Psalm 119, 130. <clears throat> The psalmist writes, and, and we could say by, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the psalmist writes, The entrance of your words gives life. It gives understanding to the simple. Can I just tell you right now, I'm simple and I need the words of God. Amen. And his words bring light. His, if his words give light and you, you, you need light on a situation, where should you go? To God, you should go to the Word, right? Yes. Uh, Psalm, uh, Matthew 16, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he says that he's given to them the keys of the kingdom. He said, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Now, back in the 80s, and then there were, there were layovers of this in different times, <clears throat> people, would, people would rent airplanes so that they could fly and have, have prayer meetings, casting down meetings. They, they'd rent buildings, you know, rooms and, and hotels on the, on the highest floors so they could get as close to the heavenlies as they could so that they could, they could do spiritual warfare. But Jesus said, whatever you loose on earth, he didn't say you have to fly into heaven. He said, whatever you do down here, whatever you loose down here, whatever you bind down here, can I tell you, you can loose anything from here and bind anything from here. That's what Jesus said. Now, the, the entrance of his words gives light. So we're going to do that this morning. Father, I just thank you. <clears throat> Say it with me. Father, we loose the plan of God for our lives. And we bind the plan of the enemy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Because, you know... God has a plan for your life, and so does the enemy. I like God's plan where he's chasing after me with goodness and pursuing me with faithfulness and loving kindness. Yes. 
Come on, that's way better than the devil's plan of bringing us under and, and keeping us captive. Amen? Amen. Uh, turn with me to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And if you would also keep in mind and keep in prayer, uh, John and Susan Sherrard, uh, their little dog, Bo, is, is sick and they're doing blood work. That's why they're not here today. You know, we become very attached to our pets, don't we? Um, so if you could lift up Bo and John and Susan um, uh, for, for Bo. Romans chapter 10, verse 8 starts. But what, did the, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith. So, I, can I just add here that people have a problem with, with churches that call themselves word of faith churches. <laughs> oh, it's that name it and blame it, blab it and grab it group, aren't you? Absolutely, 100%, I name it, I, I claim it, I blab it, I grab it. <laughs> Come on, Jesus said, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And then he's, he said also, oh good, animal services is here. Um, I'm this way. I'm this way. I'm this way. I'm this way. <laughs> Every, everybody turns around and is like, no, 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 church is here. <laughs> the word of faith, which we preach... So what what is Paul what does Paul preach? Does he does he does he preach whatever will be will be kesara sara? No, he preaches the word of faith. Paul preached the word of faith. Well, you know you got to preach you got to preach what Paul preached. Oh, I'm preaching what Paul preached. I preach the word of faith. Amen. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Can I tell you right there, right there, that verse 9? That is all you got to pray to be saved. You, Lord, I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth you are Lord. You don't have to go through and confess all the sins you ever committed ever since you were aware that you could sin. You, you, don't, you don't have, you don't have, listen, there was a thief on the cross with Jesus whom Jesus said, this day will you be with me in, in, with my father, right? You'll, you'll be with me, right? Did he get baptized? No. Nope. Baptism doesn't save. Ouch. Because some people believe that you have to get baptized in order to be saved. Now, getting baptized is an outward symbol that you've been saved, that you've washed away the old man and his old nature. Okay, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Jump down to verse 17. <clears throat> so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now see, this whole other thing in there says, you know, who, who's gonna, who's, who, can, who can proclaim if they've never heard, and who, how are they going to hear if nobody goes? And so he says, but faith comes by hearing. So what I'm talking about today is why do we teach? Why do we teach? Why do, we, why do we, we teach and we build and we, we do layer upon layer and we, we expound and we exhort and we continue to bring forth the same kind of message and the, the same spirit of faith is because without the, the hearing of the anointed word of God, without the hearing of, of, of the word, how can you be saved? And in just being saved, what does saved mean? Well, saved means I'm saved from my sins. Absolutely 100%. You are saved from your sin. It also means healed, delivered, set free, made whole. What is Paul preaching when he's preaching salvation? He's preaching healing. He's preaching deliverance. He's being, preaching um, being made whole. It's a whole packet. See, when, when God saved us, he didn't just save us so we could, we could try to get through life the best we can. He saved us because we are supposed to be disciples of his. I saw on a post today, somebody, somebody was saying, I don't remember the post, but somebody underneath it said, said um, yeah, you know, church, you know, seminaries are, are just creating students. And I, I, said, I said, do you understand 
that a student is a disciple. Because their, their complaint was that, you know, seminaries and colleges, uh, theo theo theology colleges, are just creating students. They're not creating disciples. Well, Jesus had 12 students, his disciples. Right. We're supposed to be disciples of Jesus. And the only way we're going to do that effectively is through the hearing of the word and the reading of the word. Okay? We have... We have to have the word. Okay. Um, I need to... Um, okay, so I'll, I'll recall this. When I was in Teen Challenge, and I had just come back to the Lord, I hadn't even, I hadn't even been back to the Lord for a year, and I, I, I had the privilege of being in Riverside, which is in Southern California, over the summer months in the top bunk. And nobody said, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and the Lord, the Lord spoke to me while I was asleep. And I woke up. He said, Ephesians 4, 29 through 32. Say I said, that again, David. Say so, again. So, so he says, he's, I went back to sleep and he said, he said again. He said, Ephesians 4, 29 through 32. Well, we didn't have cell phones like we do now. So I couldn't just pop open my cell phone. So I, the Lord had to say that to me three times that night. I woke up the next morning. What was the first thing I did? I read Ephesians 4, 29 through 32. Let's look at Ephesians 4, 29 through 32. Ephesians 4, 29 starts and says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be, listen to this, and it, you know, he's writing to the church, right? right. right. He's, he's writing to believers, right? He says, and be kind to one another. So apparently we still have to be told to be kind to one another. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God and Christ forgave you. The, the focus of that for me for so long has been verse 29. Verse 29. Corrupt, the word corrupt doesn't mean just those four little letter words that if you were a kid and you said one in front of mom, you got your mouth washed out with soap. Mm -hmm. Okay? Corrupt literally is uh, rotten. In the Greek, it means rotten, corrupt, inoperable, wasteful, or unproductive words. For so long, we have been talking about words. So much we talk about words. Why do we talk so much about words? Because so much of what we say is just corrupt. We, we, curse, uh, we curse our phones. Well, this stupid phone. We curse the TV. Oh, that stupid TV. Oh, that stupid car. Oh, that stupid president. Our words are corrupt. The words that are coming out of our mouths are corrupt. They're rotten. Imagine, have you, ever, have you ever opened your refrigerator and pulled something out that was at the back of the refrigerator? You opened it up, and it was just mold and gross and disgusting? Yes. That's what words like that are. When we speak, when we, as, as the Lord told Kathy, when we curse our blessings through our words, yes. we curse our blessings through our words. We're up here. We're, we're, we're still up here. <laughs> Corrupt are, are words that we speak that are counterproductive to the kind of life that we want to live. Yes. To the way we want to experience life. Yes. So I'll go back. I'll go back when, when Kathy and I were, we'd, we'd, we'd had faith and we weren't really looking for any more children. We, 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 were, uh, we, were, we were happy, just the three of us. It was me and my girls, and I was the happiest guy in the whole wide world. 
And the Lord said, you're going to have a son, name him Josiah. And so I was vacuuming, and, and the Lord said to me, he said, I want to talk to you. I don't have a house of stairs anymore because you have to vacuum them. <laughs> and uh, he, he said, I, I said, okay. He said, I want to talk to you. So I, I turned off the vacuum. I was happy to turn off the vacuum and leave it right there. And, and I, I went up to the loft and I sat down. He said, your words are stout against me. You don't want God to have to tell you that your words are stout against him. No. I said, what do you mean? He said, you keep saying that we're going to have a son and his name is Josiah, but it's hard for us to get pregnant. It takes us a long time to get pregnant. See? Some of us, we need to start letting the light of revelation come on about that. <laughs> We say we're blessed, but then we talk about how bad things are. We say we're blessed, but we say, but we say this too. We say we're healed, but then we identify with our sickness. Well, it's mine. This is, this is my cold. This is my, it's, it's my blood cancer. It's, it's, whatever it is, we identify so much. And so often we, we, we identify so much with a diagnosis that we become our diagnosis. We, we were um, uh, doing some upgrades and stuff at Verizon the other day with phones and things like that and changing our Wi-Fi because uh, they, they have these Wi-Fi towers that are really like hot spots that don't require cable. And so we, uh, it's, one of them is like $25 a month, so it's like a third the cost of Xfinity. And it works just as great. Anyway, but the, the guy there kept saying, I have really bad ADHD. I have really bad ADHD. I have really bad. He must have said, I have really bad ADHD a hundred times. And he'd say, oh, please remind me to do this. Please remind me to do that. I have really bad ADHD. And I, I thought, here's, here's a prime example of somebody who has, I, who has completely identified with their diagnosis. And you think, well, that, that's normal because they've been diagnosed with it. Well, you, just because you're diagnosed with something doesn't mean that's who you are. My mom was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, but she never identified as having it. Come on. A diagnosis is not who you are. A diagnosis is something that the doctor says you have. Your bank says you're overdrawn by $20. That's not who you are. No. That's, a, that's a temporary situation, isn't it? Yes. Just because you're overdrawn by $20 doesn't mean I'm, I'm always overdrawn by $20. I never... Our, our, our uh, pastor, Pastor Hagen at Rama Bible Church, <clears throat> he says, I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. I cannot be defeated in finances and I will not quit. I cannot be defeated in health and I will not quit. I cannot be defeated in my relationship with Jesus and I will not quit. Amen. Amen. It is important what we say. Yes, it is. Well, you know, every, everybody in my family has always been in poverty and it's always been hard for all of us. And we all have this sickness and we all have this disease. And it's so easy to just yeah. identify with that and say, well, that's just the way it's always been. Well, just because that's the way it's always been, Romans 10, 10 says that if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, I confess that Jesus is Lord over my finances. Yes. I'm not broke. I cannot quit and I, 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 I will not be overcome. That, is, that might have been, that might have been the, the supernatural temporary situation that we've been facing, but that is not my lifetime, my lifetime ambition. Right. My lifetime ambition is not to be poor and always need, need a handout. My lifetime ambition is not always to be sick and always need medications. Yeah. Nobody, nobody, when they're little, thought, when I grow up, I want to, be, I want to, I want to have to take multiple kinds of medications every day and, 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 and not be able to afford you know, enough food all the time and... Oh, that'll be great. I can't wait to grow up and just have bills to pay. <laughs> no. The world puts that into us. Yes. Our, our parents, our grandparents, people around us put those things into us. Well, that's, honey, that's just the way it is. That's just the way you are. That's just the way life is. No, I've been delivered from that. 
Amen. I've, I've been set free from that bondage. Yes. I've been set free. By, the, by his stripes, I was healed. You know, I was thinking about, I was thinking about it. You know, um, <clears throat> all the way from Genesis through the Gospels, he is the Lord who heals us. Amen. He, he himself took our infirmities upon him. And then we look at we look at the New Testament and the word for salvation, the word sozo, everything that it encapsulates. And Paul writes, he says, he says, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places through Christ Jesus. Yeah. If I have been blessed with every spiritual blessing, and we've talked about this before, uh, we, we talk about the, the fig tree, right? It's cursed from the root up, right? Do you remember that story? Everything we have starts on the inside where, where we are as spirit, okay? I'm a spirit, I have a soul, but I travel in this body, okay? This body gets up every morning, it needs to be washed and brushed and cleaned and toweled and combed and you know, every, everything else you can, needs to be fed, But this is just a temporary body. Yes. Amen. Let, let's, let, let's, look, let's look at that. Um, Mark chapter 11. Um, oh. I wish church was several hours long. <laughs> well, it's up to us. <laughs> There's one who says no. Um, <laughs> Mark 11. Chat verse, verse, verse 20. Now, Jesus and the disciples had, had, had been out. They're ministering, and they're, they're on their, they're, they're um, uh, coming from Jerusalem to, to the temple from Bethany. And then they went out, and there's a fig tree. Remember the fig tree? Jesus sees it. It says it's not the time for figs, but he was hungry. He went up to the tree. What did he do? Did he say, oh, darn it, there's no figs. I guess God just wants me to starve. How many people would, 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 would approach life and approach that situation, well, God never gives us more than we can handle? Jesus spoke to that tree and said, be cursed from the root, or be cursed or, no, I'm sorry. Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. So they go back, and, and they're, they're coming back. Verse 20. Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots up. I like that, dried up from the roots up. I add the up in there because it rhymes. It's dried up from the unseen realm into the seen realm. Everything we do as an act of faith starts in the unseen realm. God, who is in the unseen realm, created all that is out of unseen things. When Jesus healed the lepers, that came from the inside out. I don't know if you've ever heard, one of, one of my favorite testimonies of the Azusa Street Revival, there's a man who had come in whose arm had been cut off from, a, from above the elbow in a Columbine accident. And during, during, during the meeting, they watched as the bone jutted out and the tendons and muscle and veins and arteries grew alongside the bone and, the, and they watched the arm grow. Where did that come from? It didn't just, it didn't just appear like, like that. It started on the inside. It starts with the marrow and works to the bone. See, this is, this is how God works. Everything he does starts on the inside. It starts in the unseen realm and then comes to the seen realm. We like to look at our checkbooks and say, well, we're broke. Instead of, you know, you know when you look at your checkbook and say, I'm broke, you're actually cursing your finances. You're saying, I'm broke. You're confessing brokenness over your finances. When you look at how you feel, I like, I like Smith Wigglesworth, somebody, somebody said, said, how do you feel? 
how do you feel? He says, I never ask Smith how he feels. I tell him how he feels. Come on. I got a couple people with me here. Praise the Lord. Smith, Smith Wigglesworth. Yeah. Right yep. And Peter, remembering, said to him, verse 21, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Amen. Or have the God kind of faith. He didn't look to them and say, Yes, well, only I, the Son of Man, the Son of God, the Messiah, can do this. <laughs> This is reserved, he didn't say, this is reserved for a few really holy people. Yeah. That really, really, really have favor with God. Yeah. No. He said, have faith in God. And actually in the Greek it says, have the faith of God. Well, if God gives to each person the measure of faith, what kind of faith do you have? God kind of faith. We don't need to argue and quibble over whether it's what kind of faith it is. It's God's faith. It's just the, the word of God tells us that God has given to each person the measure of faith. That means there's a measure of faith that every person gets. I didn't get more. You didn't get less. I didn't get less. You didn't get more. We got the measure of faith. And where did that measure of faith come from? It comes from God. And he says, for assuredly I say to you, who Ever. Whoever. That's anybody. That's you. That's your neighbor. That, that's, that's the person down the street who, who always leaves their trash cans out. <laughs> Whoever. <laughs> you say, Why don't you ever take your Christmas lights down? Because it's a lot of work. Come on, brother. I can attest to that. <laughs> Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Name it, claim it, lab it, grab it. Paul preached the word of faith. Uh, we were talking yesterday um, about uh, different different religious denominations, affiliations, if you will, because we, we know people in, in multiple different organizations of church. I, I'm not going to go there. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to go there. No. Our words affect not the seen realm first, but the unseen realm. Yes. Our words are seeds of God's power. That when we release them, they begin to do something. But as soon as we say something contradictory to that, we are, we are digging up the seed. Yeah. Our ground is, is, is fallowed. It's unproductive. We go back to Ephesians 4.29. Our words make our lives unproductive. You know, there are things you, that you know you can do. You know, um, I, I know I can go out, I can say, I'm going to go out and I'm going to rake up my, my yard. Um, we really need it after the storm. And I'm going to do burn piles. I'm going to go do that. Okay? I am setting the path for what I'm going to do, right? Yes. After church, I am going to go home and change my clothes, and then I'm going to go out to lunch. I am creating my path for that. When you say, oh, I feel a cold coming on. You have just opened the door to a cold. When you have an ache in your pot body, and you go, oh, I wonder what that is. Yeah, oh, I hope it's nothing serious. No, I lose the plan of God for my life and I bind back the plan of the enemy for my life. I thank you, Lord, that I walk in perfect health and wholeness. I thank you that, thank you. that I prosper and I am in health because my soul is prospering in your word every day. Amen. Amen. Then don't just sit around talking about. See, this is, you know, people sit around and talk about things that are happening nationally and, and internationally. You know, I understand there's a time and a place for that. And, and you know, 
I just yesterday, and I, I, I don't spend any time being worried about it, but the neighbors of Iran are starting to prepare for war. Do you understand? We are so close to the end. This morning as I was taking a shower, the Lord said, run your race. We need, we need to put the kickstand up, put the air in the tires, and really get moving towards what God's called us to do and where he's called us to be. Amen. We need to stop with the, uh, with the corrupt words that we keep saying about ourselves. That's good. Right. That we keep saying, come on, don't speak right. corrupt words over this nation. Don't speak corrupt words over Washington, D.C. Yeah, I know it doesn't look good over there, but how about instead of cursing it, start blessing it? Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> God is not a respecter of persons. He hasn't given more faith to, to, to Kenneth Copeland and less faith to you. Kenneth Copeland has just been using his faith more. Brother Hagen didn't, didn't start out as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a worldwide evangelist preaching and heal, teaching and, and healing people around the world. He started out using his faith just to walk. Yeah. Come on, sometimes we need our faith just to walk. Yeah. Right? Right. Catherine Kuhlman didn't start out in Miracle Healing Crusades. She started out teaching. Joyce Meyer started out wearing short shorts, smoking cigarettes, having neighborhood Bible studies. <laughs> she did. Oh, she did, 100%. Uh -huh. She's the, she'll be the first one to tell you. She's having Bible studies, smoking a cigarette, wearing short shorts. Yeah. <laughs> Look at her now. Yeah. I mean, she's, you know, some of these places, people don't understand. Joel Osteen and, and Joyce Meyer... They have teams that are part of the first response to, to catastrophes. Yeah. Joyce Meyer brings fresh drinking water through del wells that they dig in Africa and other countries. Yeah. And people want to ridicule her for having a nice home. Right. Right. Well, that's, that's jealousy. Verse 23, again, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So whosoever will say whatsoever, and they will have whatsoever. Can I say to you, if you believe that you're going to die of cancer, and you confess that you're going to die of cancer, you will have whatsoever you believe. Come on, it doesn't just work in the good direction. This is why so many people are over here falling off the edge of, of, of everything, just incapable of, of, of moving forward because they have, they have put the kickstand on and let the air out of the tires, and they're sitting over here on Dead End Street at the end of Miserable Me. Mark chapter 4. Huh? Yeah. Doom, despair. Yeah. doom and gloom, doom and despair. Oh, we'll never have enough. We'll never, our needs will never be met. God said he'll meet all your needs. Right. That's right. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Mark chapter 4. And he began to teach. He began to teach. Teaching. Why do we teach? Jesus, when he went to his own hometown, the, the word says he could do no mighty works because of their unbelief. Not that he wouldn't. He couldn't. He, could, he couldn't do anything because they didn't believe. They didn't have faith. Mark chapter 4, verse 3. Listen. Listen. Behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on the stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the, and the thorns grew up 
It choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, and produced some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100-fold. I like 100-fold. Amen. Amen. And he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But when he was alone, those who were with him, around him, with the twelve, asked, asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the kingdom of God. If you're here or if you're watching, to you it's been given to know the kingdom of God. But though, to those who are outside, all things come in parables, so that seeing they may see, may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn, lest their sins be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? Okay, Jesus teaches through parables. He teaches in, in custom, customary ways that they are going to understand. Okay, um, he's not going to be teaching to them about royal life because these are mostly fishermen and, and, and the like. Okay, the sower sows the word. So the sower before was sowing seed, but Jesus says the sower is sowing the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are those who fell on stony ground, the ones on stony ground, who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves. And so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake. For what sake? Word. The word's sake. Why did persecution and tribulation rise up? For the word's sake, because you've heard the word, you're starting to put the word into practice. Immediately, what happens? Tribulation and persecution arise. Who sends tribulation and persecution? Satan. Does God send tribulation and persecution? No. I don't care if John Hagee says it or anybody else. God does not send tribulation. He does not send persecution. Okay? And they have no root in themselves, so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. See, we can become so, so caught up in life. That we, we get choked out. The word gets choked out of us. Yeah. Yeah. I don't ever want to get to a place. Very cool, but I don't want to ever get to the place where the word's getting choked out of me. Yes. We, don't, we, don't, we don't want to be in the place where the word is getting choked out of us. Right. Where we're so busy chasing fun, chasing activities, chasing this, chasing that, looking for the next big, big adventure. That we have completely abandoned the word of God. That we have completely abandoned the things of God. Verse 20. This is us. But these are those. The, but these are the ones sown on good ground. Say, I'm good ground. I'm good ground. Say it again. I'm good ground because you need to mean it. I'm good ground. Say it again. You need to mean it. I'm good, I'm good ground. I'm good ground. Those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit some 30 fold, some 60 and some 100 fold. Skip over to verse 24. Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you hear, I'm paraphrasing this, with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has to him, more will be given. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. The measure that we use for hearing the word of God. See, some people go to church. That's the only time all week they're hearing the word of God. 
Some people, they, they, they pop in on, on, on social media just to catch some preaching somewhere, and they think they've been to church. You have not been to church. You have, that is the only time you have put the word in you. Our, we have to be careful how we're hearing it. It is important who we're listening to. Yes. It is important to train yourself to spit out the sticks and chew up the hay. Right, 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 right. Because not everything everybody says when you listen to it is the anointed word of God. Amen. This is, this is why we teach. Because if we don't teach, listen, I'm a pastor and a teacher. Okay? Yeah. It befalls on me the duty of teaching yes. and to teach correctly. To rightly divide the word. Yes. It falls on the, the responsibility of the hearer to accept it and to do the word. Yes. See, I, I can't make, I, I, can, I can barely make them listen <laughs> and do it. I thought you said that was the other way around. No, you see, they listen all the time, David. Yes. <laughs> I'm using as example. I'm using ex our kids are very good. They always listen. They're uh, they all both of them go above and beyond everything that you ask them to do. And I'm not just confessing that. That is the actual truth. Yeah. They're they're amazing kids. They are. Luke six forty five. You can write that one down. Luke six forty five. It's, it's really important for us to hear the word. Yes. It's wonderful to read the word. We need to read the word. But when Paul wrote in Romans 10, he's talking about hearing it. Hearing it. You have to hear the word. Faith comes by hearing the word. Okay? Luke 6.45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Good in, good out. Bad in, bad out. News in, news out. Gossip in, gossip out. Are we, are we corrupt in, corrupt out? Word in, word out. God's word is power. Oh, look at that, it's only 10.30. We started way early. We've got a whole lot of time. <laughs> Obviously, that clock was never changed. <laughs> Hebrews 1. I want you to go here with me on this one. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. And we're going to read the first three verses here. Hebrews 1, verses 1 through 3. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. Through him also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. Words. Why do we teach? Because words matter. What you hear matters. What you say matters. What we think about matters. What we, we dwell on matters. When we line up with what God says about us, we're putting the words of his power at use, at work in our lives. When we say, by the stripe, by Jesus' stripes, I was healed. And then you add to that, I have no sickness, no pain, no disease in my body in Jesus' name. Amen. Then you are, listen, this was great. The Lord showed me this in a dream early this morning. If I, if I... If I come over here and I take Kathy's purse, then I forcibly took something from her, didn't I? If she comes over here and hands me her purse, 
She has given me her purse. Here's the purse. That looks good, right? Here's the purse, right? She has given it to me. Kathy, give me your purse. Got it. But I'm not, I'm not experiencing it. Oh, Kathy, give me your purse. This is the way most people are with healing. Healing has already been given to us. We're, we spend all our time trying to take healing. Oh, I, I'm taking healing from God. Oh, I'm believing God for healing. God has already given it to you. We just need to appropriate it. I'm, I don't, I'm not trying to take something that God has. I'm tr Listen, when we're confessing something, we're, we're placing a demand on something he's already done, something he's already given. So when I use my words the way that he uses his words, I'm just saying what he says about me, and I'm appropriating, I'm taking what he's already given me. I'm not, I'm not trying to pray heaven down to get finances. I'm not praying to try to get heaven to open up to pour out blessings on me. He has already blessed me with every spiritual blessing in the, heaven, in the heavenlies through Christ Jesus. Uh, what I need to do is I need to start understanding and walking in what he's already given me. I'm not, try, I'm not trying to get something. I'm trying to get something out. Yes. See, when we speak, when we speak, we're, we're speaking, and it's coming from the inside. It's coming, it's coming from the heart of man, mm -hmm. from the inside. Yes. And we're, we're releasing it. Through our words. Jesus said, out of, out, of, out of your bellies will flow rivers of living water. What is that? That is the moving of the Holy Spirit in your lives. When you're speaking, you're speaking things that be not as though they were, the same way that God speaks those things that be not as though they were. He creates the end from the beginning. So if I, if I sit around, it's like, you know, when we had all that snow and, and people are, are rushing back and forth and, and everybody's on Facebook and, and they're, they're all, you know, oh, you need to get the snow off your roof. You need to get the snow off your roof. And I'm like, I'm like I don't know. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, God, and I'm talking to God. He says, go out to your garage. I went out to the garage. The rafters are open. Nothing. No bowing. No creaking sounds. Takes me onto the deck. Little wobbly table that, that if, you, if, you, if you lean on it, it falls over. <laughs> Has the same amount of snow on it as the roof. And then I laughed. I said, thank you, Lord. There's no reason for me to be concerned about it. And I cast the care of that over on the Lord. Never lost any sleep over it. Yeah. Our roof was built for that. You were built to carry this. Amen. We are built to carry the word. We, you are a word carrier Amen. and a word disperser. Amen. You need to be like the man who went out sowing word. Yes. He'd sowed the word here, sowed the word there. You want to sow the word. Amen. The word, the word is, is seed. It is the word of God's power. It's the word of his power. All things, if God, if God stopped even for a moment... If, if, he, if, he, if he reneged just a little bit on anything he did at creation, everything would fall apart. If he stepped back from his creation, it would all fall apart. But everything is upheld by the word of his power. You, my dear one, are created in the image and likeness of him. Amen. We are literally speaking spirits. Amen. What are you speaking about your life. Yes, yes, yes. You know, my mom had multiple sclerosis. Uh, she, had, she had symptoms and, and she had some physical, some phys physical things that you could tell something wasn't quite right. But she never, ever, I never, ever heard her say, I have MS. All she ever said was, God healed me. I don't have MS anymore. I, I, I don't have MS. She'd say, I don't have MS. My, my, my grandmother would say, well, you don't look very healed. And she'd say, well, it doesn't matter what I look like. The word says I'm healed, so I'm healed. Right. And that's how she lived her life. She lived her life as healed. I know, I know others that have had the same situation, have had the same reports from the doctor, have been believing the same thing from the doctor, but confess that they are not healed and only grow worse. Luke 16. I think we'll be done after this. Maybe. 
Luke 16, verse 1. Is that really where I want to be? I don't know. No, I don't think that's it. Oh, Luke 17. Luke 17. Then he said to his disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come. <laughs> Luke 17, 1. It is impossible that no offenses should come. But woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown in to hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day or seven times in, and seven times in a day, he returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. This is really good news for us. Because if this, is, if this is the demand that God puts on us, then he is at least going to do that for us. Amen. Okay? Yes. And the apostle said to him, Lord, increase our faith. It was all about forgiveness. Lord, increase our faith. You mean we're supposed to forgive the same person seven times in one day? And Jesus said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus didn't say, okay, I'll pray for you that your faith would increase. No. He goes on to teach, if you have faith as a mustard seed, that's the tiniest seed, you'd say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted by the sea and it would obey you. And which of you having a servant plowing or tending sheep will say to him when he comes, when he comes in from the field, come at once and sit down. So no master is going to say to the servant who's been working in the field all day, come in, sit down, let me feed you, let me take care of you. No, in other words, he says, but will he not rather say to him, prepare something for me for my supper and gird and gird yourself up. Serve me till I've eaten and drink, and, and afterward you can, you can drink. Jesus is teaching them about forgiveness. He's teaching them how to grow, okay? Does he, think, does, he think, does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. I didn't add that. That's right there in red. I think not. So likewise you, when you have done all these, those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done, we have done what was our, our duty to you. What is our duty? Our duty is to live by faith. Yes. Jesus said, if you had faith as a mulberry tree, you could, as a mustard seed, you could pick up this, say to this mulberry tree, be picked up and cast into the sea. What is Jesus doing? He's teaching them. How are they going to grow in faith for forgiveness? How are you going to, how, here, here's, here, here's the question. How do you grow in faith for forgiving people? You do it. Yeah. Jesus said, your job is to obey the command to forgive, not to question how many times you should forgive. You do what I tell you to do. See, this is, this is one of the things that we so miss in, in modern modern Western church is that Jesus is Lord and if he says do something do it yes. if he says forgive that person forgive them well Lord I, I'll do it but I don't feel very forgiving on it you just keep walking in that forgiveness yes I, I've had I've had so many opportunities since coming here and as a Christian to forgive people Amen. Listen, really, it's not easy. One of the toughest people you have to forgive is yourself. Because you've missed it. You, you've done it. You, you've misbehaved. You've done something wrong. You, listen, we hold grudges for ourselves, and then we get mad at ourselves, and then we're angry because we're mad, and then we get angrier because we're mad at ourselves, and we're, we're unforgiving towards ourselves, and we see, we see it's, it's really easy. You know, there's some, some sweetest people in the whole wide world are sitting in the front row over here. Okay? And when, <laughs> when you have to forgive, you okay, Faith? 
Oh, okay. Put her chapstick. Oh. <laughs> That's her chapstick face. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> when we hurt innocent people and they forgive us, we still have to forgive ourselves yes. for hurting the innocent person. Yeah. We can hurt ourselves even worse through unforgiveness. Teaching. This is why teaching is so important. Forgiveness. God, listen, when we, when we mess up, when we sin, God isn't sitting back over here with the door closed saying, well, now you can't have access. Now you just have to deal with what you've done. No, no. no. He's sitting right here going, come on, baby. Here's the robe. Let's get the fatted calf. Here's the signet ring. I want you. I want you. I want relationship with you. I want you to have everything that you already had before that you gave up so that you could go do this. And he's sitting here and he says, I've got the robe. I've got the calf. I've got the ring. Come on. Put new sandals on his feet. Get him ready to run his race. Get him ready to go. God, God, when we mess up, when we repent, it, boom, it's like it never happened again. He does not withhold anything from us. He's not withholding anything from you now. It is not his intention to withhold anything from you. He has forgiveness. He has love. He has acceptance. He has all, all things that you need are ready and waiting for you. But the problem is, is that we're unforgiving to ourselves. And we think because I can't forgive myself, that means God, that means God can't forgive me. You can forgive people who don't forgive you. If you can forgive people who don't forgive you, then don't for a moment think that God, God doesn't forgive you or that God's withholding anything from you. God's not like that. My father's not like that. If you came to him in the middle of the night pounding on his door saying, I need some food for a friend that came for a visit, he's going to come out and he's going to say, all right, but only because you came and asked. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, Matthew 15, and then we'll close. And this is the story of the, uh, the prodigal son who comes to his father and he says, he says, Father, I want my share of the inheritance. Right? The, the father's still alive, but he wants his share of the inheritance. His father says, okay, you can have it. He goes off to a foreign, foreign country, spends everything that he had on riotous living. I mean, he's, he's out partying. He's buying, he's buying all the expensive goods. He's taking his friends out for expensive food. And it says that when he ran out of everything, he was alone by himself, feeding pigs. And he said to himself, he said, the servants in my father's house eat better than I do. I'll go back to my father's house and become a servant in his house. Here's the thing. A son is always a son. They never just become your servant. So the son starts heading back to his father's house. You know, it's interesting. That as he's coming back, The father was already there looking for him. He was waiting. He knew that his son would return one day. Yeah. See, this is, the way, this is the way the father is with us. He knows when we mess up, we need to come back to him. Yes. We need to get back right with him. We need to be back in fellowship with him. He... This son didn't even get the opportunity to offer to be a servant in his father's home. 
The father just brought him back in. I can just imagine it. I mean, big old hug. I, I love the way Josiah gives hugs. He gives these big old hugs. And as he's gotten bigger, you know, they become bigger hugs. Big hug. And he says, he said, my son who was lost has returned to me. Fatten, get the fatted pig. Get, get the, fatted, the fatted calf. We're going to have a party. Put on, put on the robe and the sandals and the signet ring. He's back. That which was lost is found. The other son, the older son, somehow I have got the wrong something in there again. The older son comes to his father and he says, he says how is it that I, I, I've been with you and, and I've never had this? And the father says, you could have always had this. The fatted calf was already here. You could have had a party anytime you wanted. He already had everything he needed. The other son comes back. He's welcomed back and brought back into the house. This is how God operates in forgiveness. When God forgives you, he doesn't give you a lesser assignment. Now I'm going to say that again. When God forgives you, he doesn't give you a lesser assignment. He doesn't give you a lesser status. He doesn't give you lesser opportunities. He gives you the same. You're a son. You're a daughter. The same words that Jesus spoke, the same words that Paul spoke, all by the Holy Spirit, if you will speak them, you will have what you said. Don't have the servant mentality that not everything is for me. Have the son mentality yes. that as he is, so am I in this world. Amen. That I am seated with him in heavenly places far above all power, principality, might, dominion, above every name that can be named. Amen. 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 Receive the word of God with meekness. Let it be engrafted. What does it mean to have something engrafted into you? Have you ever seen a tree that's been grafted? Um, Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we just come right now in the name of Jesus, and I thank you for every person within the sound of my voice, that as we receive to this morning your word to teach us, to help us, to exhort us, to encourage us, that you are working in us and through us, and that we are working with you, that we are doing what you have commanded us to do. We are doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving ourselves, but doers, speaking your word, speaking your words of life, your words of faith, yes. and reaping your rewards. Yes. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. Yes. Amen. God bless you. We're going to have prayer tomorrow, 10 o'clock. And yeah. then potluck next Sunday. I know. We're not going to do potluck next Sunday because the following Sunday is Easter and is that what we decided? I talked to the ladies. They don't mind. Do you want to do a potluck Sunday and then a potluck again the following Sunday? It's not a potluck. It's brunch. It's oh, brunch. brunch. I'm sorry. Potluck next Sunday, brunch the following Sunday. I don't know the difference. Yeah, that's the difference. Brunch is something you have in between. We'll send an email. <laughs> we'll clarify. Okay. God bless you. We love you. See you guys tomorrow morning.